Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to take a look at the latest retro arch update and that is 1.8.5 and in this video we're just going to take a look at the different changes for the PS Vita and the change log has uh, 66 changes to the app. Obviously not all of them are going to reflect off the PS Vita. For example, we have some Android and Chromebook crash fixes. Uh, some for the 3DS and uh, a few changes for the PC users and things like that. So uh, we're going to take a look at here real quick and then we're going to go and check out how to install the update and how easy it is to update it and not worry about losing all of your saved data and all your themes or whatever you got going on on RetroArch. So let's take a look at here real quick. And one of the big changes about this update is the menu. So they changed the default menu, but if you really like the XMB style, you can always change back to it. And here is the new main menu. And it's a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. And we're going to go into our settings here and take a look at how we can change the color and the size so from what we got going on on the notes here it says to go under our settings and go under let's see here we're gonna go under appearance user interface appearance and here is our different menu colors we got basic black Nord grub box dark basic white that kind of hurts my eyes and let's just leave it at Nord here and for our menu scale factor we're going to change this to let's change this to 170 and see what that does there we go that's a lot better because I can actually see it um, so <clears throat> that is what we got going on here for this menu and to change it back, we can go under settings, go to drivers, go to the menu here and change it back to XMB. And once you select that, all you have to do is restart uh, RetroArch going into your main menu and restart the program. And from there it will change. So if you don't see the change when you update it, uh, this is the way to do it here. Let me just restart this. Okay, so here's the XMB. What you want to do is go into your uh, drivers and go to menu and change that to Ozone. That is the new uh, menu interface there. And let's restart RetroArch. So as far as the menu goes, we have a add menu scroll. A automatically select currently checked item, fix smooth, line ticker, scroll speed, all sorts of different menu changes. It's crazy. And I'll leave a link to the change log in the description so you can go check out all the different changes. And let's go under our main menu and go to the online updater. And let's see what we can download. Oh, we have Cave Story. Nice definitely uh, download that I'm not sure if that was there before and I don't remember what was here before but it looks like we got a Nintendo GameCube and Wii we got 3DS Nintendo 64 Pokemon mini Sega Dreamcast Sony PlayStation Portable let's check that out cube test interesting Let's go back. We finally got a better uh, notifications on the bottom. When I first installed this application, the notification bar that you see right now on the bottom was very tiny and I could barely see what was going on and I had a hard time trying to scale that. Just going through my menus, I was just like, well, how the hell do I get this going here? So as far as the cores go, they will have a progress report soon. And they're saying that it's an exhaustive list and they have made a lot of new improvements and new cores available for us for the older consoles. So I'm very excited about that. And this is great. So if you do have RetroArch, this will work on 3.73H Encore 2. And I'm currently running off 3.60 Hinkaku Enzo. 
So I guess based on some results of popular vote held on Twitter, Ozone is now the default menu driver moving forward for RetroArch. So that's interesting. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started with the installation of this new update. And what we want to do is open up our Vita shell. So there's two ways to connect to your PC. Obviously, there's the FTP client and the USB connection. You can press start and choose which one you'd like to connect to and make sure it's enabled under select button. And I'll just do USB connection. Press select. Now we're connected through USB. Let's go to our desktop. Here is my USB drive and go to the first link in the description down below and I'll take you to retroarch.com under the downloads section and head on over to the PS Vita here and click on download let's show in our folder perfect let's refresh that should be done here there it is so here is our retroarch.vpk and you can simply copy this in the root of your USB drive or throw it into your VPK folder if you have one. I'm going to skip this file because I already have it in there. And now we're going to go back on our Vita. Next we're going to find our VPK. Let's go into our UXO folder. Go into our VPK folder. And there is RetroArch. So what you want to do is just in basically install it like you would normally would on any VPK. Install the package and it's going to ask you if you would like to continue to install. And I did get some lag when installing this package. I'm not sure why. And my PS Vita kind of froze and I think that's what's going on right now. And I don't know what happened here, but I just hit cancel and I was trying to get out of RetroArch here, or I'm sorry, v Vita Shell, but it just kept getting the same error. There we go. So if that does happen, just uh, put your PS Vita to sleep and then you should get prompted to continue the installation. I'm going to hit no. So right now I'm working on the updated cores and here we have the online updater and we go under content downloader and we do have a Sony PlayStation Portable core and also a N64 along with a 3DS GameCube and a couple of others that I haven't seen in the past. So I'll be doing a few tests and seeing how I can get these running and working and possibly have a video for you in the future. So that is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, comment down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.